All right, it's uh, we're about to enter the second week of January. I'm in Zone 9B, Central West Florida. Um, this is usually the month where we work on our junipers and pines for the most part. Or, you know, um, usually February is when I start working on all my deciduous trees. And I usually wait till late March, April before I start working on some of the tropicals. Um, the, the slightly subtropical, you know, uh, things like crepe myrtles and things like that, uh, I will often work on in the beginning of March. You know, my last frost date's usually the middle of February, um, so we're about a month away from that, and this is the best time for junipers and pines. As you can see, um, a lot of my junipers have a lot of wire. This is the time of year where I'll go through, and if I start to see any of it anywhere start biting in, I'll probably remove all of the wire, um, and then see what holds, if it needs to be rewired anywhere. And also where I will, uh, prune things back slightly um, to get some of them maybe possibly ready for our show in May um, it's also a good time if you're going to do a hard pruning on a juniper or, or somewhat on a pine um, you would do it this time of year um, or maybe towards the end of the month or beginning of February um, but if you do something you know, more drastic like that, then you wouldn't also do a repotting. So a lot of times if, if there's going to be a repotting, I won't do hardly anything on the top of the juniper or pine, uh, and vice versa. If I'm going to uh, do a lot of hard cut back, I won't do anything with the roots. Um, so right now, I don't see, I've looked through my junipers. I'll let you see some of them here. There's my little Raleigh, little Roddy forest over here. I've got different kinds of junipers, rocks and trays and taller pots. But I don't see any that need anything right now. A little bit of pinching probably in a month. Um, a little light pruning. But I uh, did a lot of harsh pruning, you know, a year or so ago and... Uh, I used to have a tendency to over keep them over pruned and they would weaken over time. So I've learned uh, mostly from a friend of mine from the Bonsai Club who always has super healthy, lush uh, junipers that sometimes it's good just to leave them alone for a while in terms of their growth and not pruning them too much. So I'm tending to do that a bit more. Um, but I can see I have a black pine here I think I'll work on right now. Um, I need to, a little work on the design. I want to do something with this. Maybe bend and bring the bottom down and over. And maybe gin part of this this trunk. And then clean it up a little bit. Uh, put some wire on the small branches. And, uh, I don't really need to repot that this year. Maybe I'll do that next year. Unless I find the right pot for it. I have uh, retired from working as a podiatrist and have decided to become an artist so soon I'll be probably uh, displaying some of that on my channel or, or have another channel for that for my painting uh, journey um, but that also means I don't really have an income <laughs> so um, bonsai soil and pots and such can be expensive so I'll be doing it as I started out in bonsai I'll be doing it on the cheap for a while um, which is good for you guys that are learning when I put videos out and you see what I do that you don't really need to spend a lot of money for this hobby um, you know in terms of getting plants and you know the most expensive pro the probably kind of should do is the bonsai soil and you can go out of your way and I'll make a video in the future sometime on making your own soil um, and you can do it cheaper that way, but sometimes it's difficult to find the right materials, and then you have to sieve the dust out of it, and you want to get particle size around an eighth of an inch throughout the mix. So, um, you know, it's a bit of work, and I've done it in the past, and then stopped doing it when I didn't, you know, didn't need to, but uh, I might need to be getting back to that because of money. Um, unless I start selling some art, which would be great, and then I can... Uh, afford to put more money back into the bonsai. Um, there's the spruce pine forest you saw in my last video. 
Um, this is also the time of year I should, you know, I'm probably going to commit to at least one video a month. I was originally going to do every couple of weeks and, um, the art has gotten me, I've gotten caught up in that. So probably once a month, uh, I know the last couple of months, it hasn't been hardly any, but that's the slowest time of year is when the end of fall and the and beginning of winter. But now that we're getting midwinter and then late winter, that's usually when we tend to get busy in this area anyway. All right, so yeah, I'm going to grab this pine um, and do some work on that. This is the black pine that I grew from seed. Um, I'm not sure how long ago. It was probably like 15 years ago, 12 years ago, something like that. And um, the only thing I have to do with a lot of my junipers really is a little light pruning and uh, removing wire, which... You don't need to see that, other than learn, knowing that when you remove wire from a branch, you cut it in sections. Because if you try to, unless it's very super light wire that unwinds very easily, if it's thicker wire and you try to do that often, you'll end up breaking a branch that you really like or need. And so it's not a good idea. You want to cut it off in pieces. All right, let me get my camera adjusted. All right. Figure out here. Yeah, let me move it this way, maybe. All right. So yeah, I'm thinking, you know, see if I can bend this. I'll probably have to wrap it. And what I'll do is I'll stop and start this video at different times, so you don't have to watch every tedious thing I do. I'm end up with a long video, but I'm going to see if I can bring this end in and, and bring over in here. This growth here, I'm probably going to remove and gin the back of this. And the theme will be, you know, everything coming out to the right, back to the right, towards you. And I want, so that's why I need to do something with this part of the design. And if I can't get that working right, I might actually just consider it not part of the design. And then when I do the repotting, remove this tree and make a separate tree from it, which is a good possibility. Then also I need to clean all the, like, the downward needles and thin them out a little bit straight up and straight down remove those needles clean it up so the light can get in there and it can bud and it's got buds but it'll start producing more in there um all right so um i think what i'll do is um wrap this branch here and, and wire it so i'm going to stop the video and then when i'm ready start wiring it i'll start it again So here I have what's called vet tape. Comes in these rolls, and uh, used to use it when I worked in practice. And I'll take the roll and fold it in half. Yeah. And this I'll wrap tightly around the branches. I already started at the base, and, and make sure it's very tight as I wrap. covering most of what I of each turn over again and then once I get all this wrapped all the way up the branch I'll wrap it with wire if it kinks up some that's okay as long as you just keep overlapping and wrapping it tight This is a cheaper alternative to to buying, getting raffia and wetting it and applying that. But I'm sure that would be better if you have your, that at your, you can get it and use it. Raffia, I've used that in the past and that works very good. Probably better than this, but I have this and this has always worked for me also. Um, worst comes to worst and something goes wrong with this branch. It's it's not really, I'm not sure I even want it in this design, but I do hope not to hurt it. And that if I don't use it when I repot, I'll, I'll take the tree out and make a small literati out of it or something. I love literati. It's one of my favorite styles. And the purpose of this is when you wire and you bend it, it helps keep you from pulling the bark loose from the 
the inner bark. Um, you know, so you don't disrupt the flow of fluids up and down the bark. You don't want that to separate from the harder wood, you know, um, that doesn't carry the fluids deeper down. All right. All right, so that's wrapped. Now I'm going to apply wire. Let's see, probably whatever the thickest wire I've got. It's a little flexible, but it is a heavy branch. Let's see what I got in here. Not sure what the gauge is, but it's my thickest wire I have. It looks like it's, uh, you know. Sure, millimeters at four or five, maybe five millimeters, something like that. But if I need to, I can double or even triple uh, the wire if I need to to get it to hold. Got my wire cutters, even ends, so that if when you remove it, we cut to remove wire from a branch, uh, you don't need to cut into the tree, into the bark. So like a, when you measure the length of wire, you take like the length of that you're going to go along and then you add about another 30 percent or even a little more than that if you want to be safe. So I'm going to get this propped in here somewhere so that the end it's firmly in the pot. I'm going to start wrapping. 45 degree turns. I had cut these needles so I could get in here easier when I was wrapping, but I'm probably going to uh, gin this back part of this anyway, so but for now we'll leave it there. try to actually bend the wire before it's up against the tree so I don't put the stress on the tree when I bend the wire I'll we'll definitely need another another piece of this wire on there I didn't make this long enough to cover the whole thing plus I can tell it's not going to be strong enough to bend this branch so let me get this on a little way. I'll cut another one. And these ends, this is another reason to have gin pliers. So that you can put the stress on the wire instead of me trying to force it against, use the stress on the bark or the tree. I can do it with the pliers. Right. Get another piece of wire.
someone mentioned it on my, one of my postings on Facebook about my painting that worried that I might have been neglecting my trees and they haven't been neglected it's just luckily this time of year there's not that there wasn't that much to do you water them left you know I'm basically watering about once or twice a week um, sometimes more if we get sunny weather and stuff I, I ch still check them every day quickly but and I haven't really done any any other repotting or removing wire or anything yet that's, that's about to start. Like I said, this is the month to start going through my junipers and all that. and Moving wire and rewiring and seeing if they need maybe a little pruning. Let's see, I might need to put more wire on the end, at least smaller wire, because I'll be wiring these the end up. But let's see if this will hold a bend. I'm going to try to put stress in different areas so I don't put all the stress in one spot and crack the branch. And I've probably said this before in other videos, you know, one crack, usually you're okay. Two cracks, you, you might have killed your branch. And when you, when you bend, if you twist two at the same time, you get more bend out of it. So I'm turning it counterclockwise, which is something you had to think about when you're applying the wire. Um, so you don't, uh, you know, when I think about that now, it might have been better if I, uh, nope. That should be, I'm still tightening the wire as I bend, so I applied it the right way. I was wondering whether I applied the wire in the right direction. But as I twist, I'm actually not loosening the wire. Something to consider. And snapped. This is also a good time because the flow of the sap is uh, hasn't really peaked out yet. Um, Some bend in there. I can wire these over like this. I still want to see. I'm going to have to add more wire in here because I want to bend this to come in the direction of my finger back here, and then wire this as a tuft coming up. So it'll follow the theme of the tree. You you always think of when you, you know everything tends to go in a certain direction. You get the the theme you create in your main part of your tree. You want to also you know, copy that to some degree in the other parts of the of the tree, um, or even when you do a forest, you know, you gotta keep a consistent theme. All right, so I'm gonna stop the video again, add more wire, and then I'll start the video again. Okay, I put another piece of wire here. We're gonna see if we can get some more bend out of this. I'm 
Sorry, my chin is hitting the camera. Let me see if I can move this over here. Let's try that. to show you what I'm doing. My hands are covering the branch. Sometimes when I have trouble doing it with my hands, I do some bending using the gin pliers. Let's see if I can... So far, no cracking. Okay. I might be able to hook a strap or wire pull this in a little bit that way. I'm not sure if I want to though. That might be good enough. And wire these little guys out. So all right, I'm going to apply some wire on these small branches and then I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see what I did. I thinned it out. I had to remove a small little branch that was a bar branch with this branch here on each side so we want them alternating um, when I wired this small part I wired this branch and this branch and I made it like a U underneath so that as it turns it, it would be the opposite direction on each of these branches so that when you bend one it wouldn't move the other branch um, so kind of horseshoe it alright now I'm going to come in and I'm going to gin this back part of this or maybe now that I prune those needles, it doesn't look bad that way. Um, hmm. Yeah. So actually, I'm not going to kill this back part off right now. Um, I might prune this back branch here. In fact, I'll do that. shorten it anyway. I'll prune that right now. Okay. Alright, so shorten that. Then I'm going to go in and just thin out the needle some and clean it up and then I'll be back. Alright, so now you have to look at the tree. I thin the needles out and prune the very long needles uh, except for the the part in the lower part because it's going to be a little weaker. Aiming down weakens the growth a little bit so I left those needles longer. Um, so you can kind of see the main design there. And we'll just let it go and I'll post a follow up in the future when it all buds out and eventually we'll need to pluck needles and pluck um, pluck some of the new growth probably May, June maybe we consider repotting it next year into a nice pot so um, it's getting dark I was going to do more on this video but uh, it's getting too dark to film so I'll talk to you later